Hey y'all, welcome back to Red at the Wire. We're going to take a look today at the Victory Ride Stakes, which is a sprint for three-year-old fillies and really competitive field. So let's take a look at it. The Grade 3 Victory Ride Stakes is for three-year-old fillies and it's run on the dirt at six and a half furlongs. Number one is Interpolate, and this is a Chad Brown at Rad Ortiz, Claravich Stables, but it's on dirt. Uh, so not quite the same excitement as on turf. Uh, this one's uh, done on... Uh, done not much wrong it's uh has progressed pretty well uh the last race in the beaumont uh couldn't get to key of life and i thought that was a bit of a red flag because uh key of life really looked all in after setting pretty quick fractions and uh this one coming off the pace that should have been ideal uh to take it down and yet couldn't quite get there uh so that kind of is a a, a bit of a red flag for me now there has been some time off growth and chad brown and whatnot I'll expect this one to run a top effort. Uh, I'm just not sure it's going to be good enough, uh, but likely it's going to have the pace to run to, so uh, maybe this one becomes a more significant player because of that. Uh, but I think under is more likely. Number two is Dazzling Blue, uh, trained by Black, Brad Cox, and you got Flavian Pratt. Uh, this one has been a steady improver, although uh, it took a while to debut at three. And uh, came out in an option 125 and, and won handily, but the buyers are a little light. Uh, the, the one thing I will say is that uh, she's got the kind of progression that you like to see. Got the career high buyer for the debut at three, and she is improving uh, her class levels as the race levels are increasing. So that's an ideal scenario. What bothers me is that, uh, number one, the buyers are light, but number two, she's going to have other pace to deal with. Uh, Maple Leaf Mel looks uh, pretty tough, so I think this one might be up against it here. Number three is Vava, uh, trained by Cherie DeVoe, who uh, just got a really nice win with more than looks in the Manila in an upset uh, that we tipped out. Uh, and uh, this one is uh, by Gunrunner, and uh, they tried to stretch out in the Rachel Alexandra, and it just didn't uh, work three back, so they've moved this one back to sprints, and it, it seems to have made the difference. Uh, the last two have been uh, have been solid efforts at the option 100 level, and now has had a bit of a freshening, uh, which shouldn't be a problem for Cherie. Uh, has run at the same class level uh, the last two, and uh, and uh, the, the class the race level was the same, and her class level was the same. Uh, so there wasn't a move forward necessarily, but it was still a pretty good move. And this one's coming off the pace. Uh, I think it's going to have the stamina uh, to stick in there if she stays up near what might be a, a pretty good uh, pace. And uh, I kind of like this one to, uh, to either pick up the pieces if there's a meltdown or at least stay in the mix at under. Uh, Adelise's smile uh, just isn't good enough from what I can see. Uh, the last effort, uh, you know, got a 73 buyer at the N1X level and... and uh, and didn't win, and uh, this is a pretty big step up in class. You see the one prior stakes effort in the forward gal uh, wasn't uh, wasn't very promising, losing to Red, Car Red Carpet Ready, who's in here today, uh, by 31 lengths. So I think we'll pass on this one. Uh, Maple Leaf Mel is the hot horse. You know, everybody's pretty excited to see run. It's obvious why. Uh, the Miss Breakness last time, uh, she dusted Key of Life. Uh, just, just, you know... <laughs> Just put her away pretty easily, and Kia Life is a pretty damn good horse. And uh, earlier in the year was probably the leader in the sprint division. So uh, I thought that was uh, was pretty encouraging, especially since it was her first effort against Open Company, and her first effort in graded stakes. Now you get an extra half a furlong here, but uh, the way she ran was really what was so impressive. She was so relaxed on the lead, and just was able to settle with little difficulty. And uh, you just really have to like her chances in this race. And uh, I, I tell you, I, uh, uh, you know, uh, Money's Gold was uh, was uh, a horse similar to her earlier in the year, and uh, uh, once uh, once moved up in class, uh, wasn't quite as good. But I, I think this one's a little different. I, I really like the way this one's running, and uh, I think this one can win this race. Downtown Mischief uh, is another one that really hasn't done much wrong. Force first and a second. Um, the last one was in uh, Statebreds in the Bowery and uh, did pretty well and got the win. Uh, 
was starting to regress a little bit uh, when uh, she went into open company. And more to the point, Linda Rice was just interviewed earlier today and was just said she was just hoping for second or third with this one. Um, the buyers are a little light in comparison to some of the others. And uh, I don't think that this one will run on the uh, try to get on the lead. I think this one will rate and uh, seems to be able to do that. Uh, maybe underneath, but I think that's the ceiling here. Topsy, as uh, Steve Asperson's barn is red hot right now. And uh, he had been slumping early in the year, but he certainly made up for it. So that you have to consider that when you look at this one. You get Jose Ortiz aboard. It's interesting that Tyler Gaffleon jumped off this one. Uh, so that's, uh, that's a bit of a concern. But uh, ran behind Maple Leaf Mel in the Miss Breakness and uh, rated off the pace and made a nice strong close. Uh, the last race uh, was in the slop, so maybe we can forgive it a little bit. Uh, the big concern is that this one didn't build on the Miss Preakness for another top buyer. Maybe there was a little regression there, not overly certain. Uh, but, you know, you got a hot barn right now, and at 12 to 1, I think you have to use this one. I'm not sure about winning, but I think under is a pretty good bet. Red Carpet Ready is the logical favorite in this race, and uh, certainly the rival to Maple Leaf Mel to win it. Uh, since they moved this one back to sprints, it's um, it, it's certainly her wheelhouse. I mean, she's undefeated uh, running at one turn. But uh, that last race, the eight bells, I, I had some concerns about that because she uh, rated off the pace and, you know, looked money's gold in the eye, took the lead, but let money's gold back in the race. And, you know, money's gold re-rallied. And, and again, money's gold isn't a bad horse. But it was clear that this one was weakening uh, to a degree. Now, you do get a half a panel less in this race, so maybe that will help. But I'm just not sure uh, that this one is such a cinch, particularly when you consider Luis Saez is not riding very well at all lately. And uh, so do you have to use this one? Yeah, I think so. But uh, I kind of think the new shooter might be a better bet to win it. So here's our top five for the victory ride. Uh, number one, Maple Leaf Mel. Uh, I think this one uh, can handle any pace challenges that she might have. Love the way she relaxed on the lead, and I think this one's a major player, and uh, I think is, is going to be the win candidate here. I think she'll hold off uh, Red Carpet Ready and any other comers. Uh, number two is Red Carpet Ready, certainly capable of winning this race. Just got a bad feeling in, uh, after watching uh, her just being barely able to hold off Money's Gold who is a good horse, but uh, she just seemed to be weakening. The cutback and distance will help a little bit, uh, but I just got a feeling that uh, maybe she's due for a loss. Uh, number three is Vava. I liked... Uh, I like the way she runs. I think her pace numbers stack up really well here. She'll be off the pace and I think will likely be under, uh, but could possibly pounce if there is a pace meltdown. Um, and I think is a little underrated here. Number four is Interpolate. Um, I think will definitely be improved off the layoff, but it did bother me that she couldn't get to Kia Life when Kia Life was clearly out of gas in that last seven furlong race. So uh, I think this one's talented and will probably have a good effort here. Could benefit if there is a pace meltdown. Uh, just think that she's uh, not quite as good as some of the top ones here at this point in her career. Number five is Topsy. Uh, Steve Ashmanson's barn is red hot, and I think, again, this one will benefit if there's a pace meltdown and could be running late, and very possible that this one could upset the apple cart if Red Carpet Ready and Maple Leaf Mel are dueling in the stretch. Uh, highly, highly possible. You're getting really nice odds, and uh, for the sequences, I might consider this one. So I like the new shooter. I think uh, Maple Leaf Mel has a really good chance to uh, wire this field. Uh, I like the relaxed uh, running style that she has on the front end. And I think she can hold off uh, the challenges, and they're going to be quite a few. It's a good field. I hope our analysis, of course, helps you with your own wagering decisions. And I wish you the best of luck over the weekend. We have our website right at the wire coming up next week. Uh, it'll be up uh, prior to Saratoga. We're going to focus on the spa mainly to start. Uh, there'll be a lot of opportunities there for you and a lot of materials I think you'll get a lot out of, so I hope you check it out. 
Uh, for those of you who have been loyal subscribers so far, I've built in a little loyalty program to reward you uh, as being part of this community. And of course, anybody who subscribes up until July 12th, you can benefit from it as well. So if you didn't have any, uh, if you didn't have enough motivation from the content, you've got a little extra incentive, and I hope you take advantage of it. So please like and subscribe, and we do thank you very much for coming by. And uh, to all of you who've been in the community, again, thanks so much for your input. Love seeing Derby Knowledge. Uh, good to see you back uh, from the uh, the wars of fantasy baseball. And uh, the the uh, John Moeller was another one who dropped the line. I was good to hear from you again. So uh, I love the way we're, we're moving along, and uh, I hope you do too. I'll be talking to you in the very near future, and until then, be well. Thank you.